Guys, they're literally unloading shark after shark. Transferring over a dozen sharks, stingrays, and big fish. Alright, we're here with Stuart and Sebastian. What's going on guys? Uh, we're in the middle of unloading some sharks that have just arrived. Sebastian has been down collecting them overnight with the rest of our team. So they're just going to go through the sizing, sexing and a few other things. Uh, we've got probably 11 small ones, two different types of sharks. Southernose, Long Tongs, Valley. It's pretty good. There's 11 sharks there? Yeah, no, there's probably about 20 all up in each tub. We're going to be getting them out and putting them away. I don't know what's going on and so I'm going to pass on the vlog camera to the curator here at Cannes Marine, Laura Simmons, and she's gonna teach you more about these sharks, stingrays, and what's going on right now. I'm gonna hand the camera off to Laura. Okay. Hi everybody, we're very excited. We have some new black tip reef sharks that are um, collected specifically for our public aquarium clients. I'm at the Cannes Marine facility, and my team is unloading the animals as we speak. Now, one of the things that we do that's really important is we not only measure and sex all of our animals, we check their overall body condition. So they get acclimated into the systems that they're gonna live in while we care for them. It's just our way of making sure that husbandry is done thoroughly. So they're going into various tanks, depending on the species. I'll show you one of the tanks with Am I aiming it to the right tank? We have a species called Carcharhinus melanopterus. Those are the black tip reef sharks that you're probably really familiar with. But we also have another type of black tip shark that's called a Carcharhinus limatus. So he won't go with the other sharks. And uh, we also have shovel nose guitar fish. Um, and we even caught some really cool golden trevally. So yeah, it's pretty cool because our guys came up with uh, some really, really great animals and you'll see them in a public aquarium near you very, very soon. I don't know, should I keep going? What do you want me to do? I'm just going. We have a beautiful stingray. It's, we think it's a Hymantara Astra or Toshi. Okay, I'm gonna turn it around again. Hey guys, what are you guys doing? I'm loving. You can see your trusty host over here getting wet. Okay, great. Howdy. This is a gar. Uh, not the gars, I think it's oh, long tongs. Gar. Long tongs. Beautiful gar. Okay, he's got to run and get in the water. There he goes. Wow, that's a big fish. That's that guy right there. They just put him in. The black tips go in here. Now the black tip recharge? Black tip, yep. Wow. Where'd he go? Guys, they're literally unloading shark after shark. Yep. And he goes in here. How big is this tank? I think it's about 20,000 liters. That's a big pool. How do you know if it's a male or a female? Males have claspers and females don't. Stop wiggling, dude. We're trying to figure out if you're a dude or a girl. Uh, boy. The boy. It's like having 10 kids all at once. All these baby sharks. Gender reveals. No! Little male. The male. Oh. All right, I've had like two or three boys. I need a girl now. <laughs> another male. Oh, another boy. I always wanted a girl. You won't see much if it's a female. Yeah. Get it? That's oh, female. Female? Yeah. Yeah. Girl? Yeah. That's a girl? Yeah, we gotta go. Oh, yeah. It's a girl! What are you oh, writing God, on your clipboard? Oh, she's scared of the camera? No, no, no. no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm really no, no. Good. <laughs> what are you writing on? No, really, no, no. I'm good. <laughs> Guitar fit. Is it a male or a female? Can you guys female. tell? You can okay. tell because it doesn't have the claspers. Right. Guys, they just keep bringing more and more sharks, and this bin right here is filling up with these black tip reef sharks. Look how many of them there are now. The bin started with just one shark, and now there's over 10 sharks in here. What is this part? Siphon the water out. You're gonna siphon all the water out? Yeah. 
Uh oh. Oh, jeez. Okay. Alright. Why we wear these silly looking shoes? Uh, Where is all this water gonna go? It's going into the drain. It's going all the way down there. Bye, water. How do you feel? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably tired. They did fish all night long. So that's it. How many sharks and stingrays did we unload? Okay, so we had two shovel nose guitar fish, 12 black tip reef sharks, two gar, or as we call them, long toms. We had one Lombatus black tip, a high mantra whip tail ray. We had the one sweet lip gibosis, and then a partridge in a pear tree. Partridge. I was gonna say, can we go check on all of the different sharks? We like to see them settle, so come on. Okay. okay. All right, so they just got done transferring over a dozen sharks, stingrays, and big fish into these vats. So we're gonna take a look now and see what they got. Thanks, David. Thank you, guys. Great work. Good job. Laura, so tell us about all of the sharks that we just got in. So the black tip reef sharks are kind of one of those species that people recognize. When they see a shark, they're nicely represented in public aquariums because they are a very reefy species, very distinctive black tips on their fins. They're sort of a nice tan brown color. And you'll see that we've got a nice population of them. So this tank currently only has the black tips that we've just collected. And so now we've acclimated them into our systems for holding. And these animals will be here until we get them settled and feeding and treated. And so now these are our little residents. And how long are they going to be here? And where is the final destination from? Most of these animals will be here between a month and two months. The minimum is going to be at least 30 days because they're going through a quarantine. And this group of sharks is going to three different public aquariums in the U.S., one public aquarium in South America. So we've got a lot of animals going to a lot of places. They were collected specifically for these projects. Wow, there's so many of them. Oh my God. You should come look through the window. It's a pretty impressive sight. They're all in here. Yeah, aren't they beautiful? Yeah, so we'll be monitoring their water quality, monitoring their feeding and their behavior, and making sure that every single animal is thriving. And then we'll select the correct animals for the correct project. Some of our facilities will need smaller animals, some will need the larger ones. So we've got a nice assortment of exactly what we needed to have these major public aquariums educate the world about how amazing wildlife really is. We want people to understand that sharks are pretty special. They're they're not scary. People should love them because they are awesome and they're not dangerous. They're just misunderstood species. So the more public aquariums that can display them and educate, the better. What kinds of things do you feed these sharks? Oh, we give them exactly what they love. They get lots of different types of fish, like pilchards, and they'll even get chunks of tuna. They get squid. They get a really good array of species. We don't feed them the same thing every single day. They'll be fed first thing in the morning. Is it okay for them to, to be that many sharks in one? Oh, yeah, yes, absolutely. They are. This is a species that does like to school, and you can see that they're very comfortable together. None of them are behaving oddly. The things we look for are that they're swimming in an upright position, that they are oriented orienting well, not rubbing on the walls. You can see that they're kind of going with the flow. Um, we're very particular in all of our habitats, whether it's for sharks or corals or fishes, that our water quality is always top notch. These guys look incredibly cruisy, considering we just offloaded them from the boat and from the truck within the past 15 minutes. So, what are some of the regulations on the sharks? For the fishing for these animals, we actually have special permits where we're allowed to collect these sharks for public aquarium purposes. I was super impressed by how all four or five of you guys are working together to pull the sharks out, sex them, busting it to make sure that these sharks got as fast as possible to their bins. It's all about making sure that we keep it as stress-free for the animals as possible. They've gone to a lot of effort to come here. It's our job to care for them, and that's what we do best. Come over here and let's look at some of the shovel nose. They're a bottom-dwelling species, and that's why they're so different and nice to look at. Uh, here's the one about to swim to the left of the window. Swim it around. We have one little stingray, and it's a beautiful stingray. It's because that species crossbreeds, it could be a, a hybrid. It's a different type. It's a, a type of black tip reef shark, but it's not the Melanopterus. It, it's a different species. It's a very cool species, though. He's got a very pointed nose, and he's much more silver gray. He doesn't go in the same tank as the other black tips. No, Why no, not? Because we wanted to give him a, a bit more space. He wouldn't normally be schooling just with other black tips. And obviously, we have the black tips there that we need. We like to not overload one system more than the other. So. 
What are they doing with that? We're storing it if we're putting all of our gear away. So basically, um, because so much of what we lift and what we move, we have to use the, the crane. And we like to just make sure everything's stored away in its proper place. All right, guys, I just want to thank Laura and the entire team here at Cannes Marine for allowing us to showcase this really interesting process. It's amazing because you always see sharks and stingrays and some of these bigger animals at your public aquariums, inside some home aquariums even, and you just wonder, how did that animal ever get there? And this is how, and it's so amazing to see that people like these guys are doing it responsibly. They're taking such good care of the animals and are spending the extra time to make sure that it's done the right way. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanna know what your thoughts are about this entire process in the comment section below and uh, we'll see you in the next one. But until then, remember to keep those nitrates low. George, out.